Hello, welcome. So, in the last lecture, we are talking about the jigging and we are discussing about jigging under the screen and the jigging where we use some ragging materials also. Now, when you have feed particles larger than the apertures of the supporting screen, that is all your particles, all your feed particles are coarser than your screen aperture size. So, that means no particle is going to pass through your jig aperture. So, that is called the jigging over the screen that is you are trying to separate out all the particles on top of the screen. So, jig that screen is only a support platform for your particle to hold. So, it is called the jigging over the screen and in that case jigging over the screen may be practiced that is when your feed particles are larger than the apertures. And the heavy product grade is partly controlled by the thickness of the bottom layer which in turn is controlled by the rate of withdrawal through the heavy discharge port. That is what I will exp uh, explain that you have got a now your stratified bed formation. So, now you have to have some means to uh, collect them separately that is your uh, from the each layer that is I have got a stratified layer. Now, I must slice through a particular portion of that and that is the most difficult thing that is to predict that where I should have a separation between my uh, say your float fraction and sink fraction because everything is in one particle bed. So, once you are sure about that then you can have some kind of your slicing of the bed and then on top of that your, your say bed you can take out the float and underneath that you have the sink material you have to take out the sink material that is your heavier fraction. But these are the design features. Now, to do that what to do? Now, we use gates that is how you are basically trying to slice it we call it gates. Gates are operated to allow the heavy fraction to drop into a bucket elevator for removal that is you have a gate and then that transfers to uh, the heavier fraction to a bucket elevator and then the bucket elevator is basically uh, there to transfer your heavier fraction to a particular uh, storage uh, space or maybe to another unit operation for further cleaning. Now, what is the critical part here that is the positioning of the gate opening that is how uh, how long you will open the gate that is you have got a gate suppose this is the mechanism is like that that is you have a stratified bed of particles like that and there you have got a gate. So, you want to open it. So, what will happen when you are opening it the bottom most part will try to go down, but you have to close the gate before the lighter particles they try to enter the gate. So, that is the timing that is positioning of the gate that is where you will position how far and the gate opening. Positioning of the gate opening is controlled by the location of the boundary between the light and heavy layers. So, where is the layer where is the separating layer I have got heavies I have got lights where is the separating layer that is what we have to uh, you have predicted. So, that is an ex that is the job of an experienced engineer uh, uh, who is experienced enough to operate your jigging uh, uh, your operation in your for processing your material. And this is determined by a weighted float positioned in the bed or monitoring the pressure fluctuations in the pulsating water. So, what happens when your this is little bit difficult to understand because what happens when you are have a mixture of particle bed which is resting on the your jig screen. Now, you are trying to fluidize the bed that is we call it fluidization bed expansion. So, what happens the when the water fast it is having interaction with the bottom most layer of particles. Although the entire load of that that is your mass of the total particle bed remains constant, but 
because if your total amount of material is fixed, but when the fluid is trying to displace it it is displacing a particle layer at the bottom which are having much your lesser density at average bulk density you say then the particles when they are stratified with the only the heaviest particles are at the bottom heaviest and coarsest particles are at the bottom. So, that if I say that if I am only considering that so that bulk density of that your bottommost layer is much higher than when it is in mixed form. So, that is why there will be a pressure fluctuation in the pulsating water that means how much of pressure you need for that your pulse. So, if I am monitoring that so when it is getting much more resistance so that means the initial layers of the particle bed is concentrated with the heavier fraction, but that is also you have to uh, have some kind of your modeling that is your correlation to be developed based on that. And sometimes you are having some weighted float gate that is called your the gate opening that is you are looking at you are seeing that what is your product quality and if you are monitoring the product quality based on that say suppose you are finding that more lighter fractions are getting uh, say contaminating your say heavier fraction. So, that means your gate positioning gate positioning has to be lower down because just imagine I have got a layer of this and your lighter particle is up to that, but my gate is positioned here. So, what will happen these lighter materials also will come with your heavier fraction. So, if I am monitoring that quality of my heavier fraction I know that I have to lower it down this is how it is being done, but you need lot of understanding of a, how a jig works to um, so perfect the operation. Now, this is what I have already shown, but this is a very popular design for coal processing and this is known as bomb jig. So, it is suitable for coarse load that is fit size range up to maximum 175 to 200 millimeter minimum 40 to 60 millimeter, because what will happen if it is finer than 40 millimeter your jig aperture may be around say 30 millimeter. So, if I have particles less than your 30 uh, millimeter they will pass through this. So, you have uh, it is the mandatory that all the particles should rest on the your screen bed because screen is there only as a support. So, you have to control the particle size what you are feeding and you also see that it operates only it accepts only a relatively coarser particle. And how you are pulsing this that is by compressed air that is with a compressed that is called the air pulsation type jig and it can have 2 to 3 products like I can have your uh, if I know that okay, if I have a height of your stratified bed is 1 meter I know up to 0.2 meter from the top is my clean coal. So, you take out that and I know that 0.2 to 0.5 meter depth it is having a moderately mixture of your uh, coal and your shell. So, that I take out we call it middling and the bottom one I know they are more relative more um, concentrated with the relatively heavier fractions. So, that we say tails and then so we are eventually having three products or maybe what we can do that is the float whatever we have taken out that may have also some amount of your heavier particles. So, that we send it to another jig compartment of this type or another jigging operation and there I can have a clean coal and I can have another fraction which is also having significant amount of carbonaceous part, but that may not be utilized for a specific for a specific purpose it may be utilized for some kind of or uh, some other purposes, but the price of that clean coal may be much higher than that coal what we are using it for some other purposes and that is why it is called the middling that means it is just a your basically uh, your uh, middling means it does not conform to the final quality, but it has got certain amount of coal which is having some value for some 
particular use, but it will fetch you little uh, at much lesser money than your clean coal. Then the discharges are automatic here, then it is a modular design, bed area and elevators designed to suit duty that is a, uh, so those things are not shown here that is mainly we are talking about how the products are being collected and your handled. Designed to handle high portions of sinks compared to the mineral jig that means, if I have a, a relatively higher percentage of your sink material. So, this, this is designed to do that because you have got so much of say volume available here and then the your sink material they go down and we can collect through that. So, that is these are the typical features of a particular jig uh, we cannot go into that those details. Now, to give you an idea that how big the jigs could be I am giving this example from uh, uh, whatever dimensions I got it for uh, say coal washing purposes the jigs are used and you will see that the, the dimensions could be from 2 meter that is it could be a 2 meter long to your 4.2 meter long. And uh, I am not talking about the uh, what is the weight of this because I am specifying the meter square that is the area jigging area how big is the jigging area you have. It could be from 6.1 meter square to 44.1 meter square area jigging area and the feed that is uh, your tonnage capacity it can have from 260 tons per hour to 550 tons per hour. So, these actually uh, refers that is your uh, how much how much is the uh, say capacity of the a jig can have sorry here this is this is what is showing that is the your say width of the jig bed not the length because length you can increase because length depends on that how much of residence time of the particles uh, should be given. So, that is the width of the jig bed and this is the your jig area that means, now we can calculate that what is the length of that. And so, you see that they are very relatively very high capacity jigs that is available and this is uh, a photograph I have taken it from open source to show you that how a Feldspar jig looks like. So, this is what basically the Feldspar jig like your ragging material being used. So, the diffuse material that is a sink material which is coming through that and you can have a your know, some kind of your bucket elevator to uh, say transfer them from this portion this this portion to your to a separate launder and uh, your overflow you are already getting through the overflow wire that is some kind of your discharge mechanism. Now, if you look closely at the principle of operation of jig, so what exactly we are trying to do that is by doing that in terms of your bit of fluid mechanical literature, if we try to look at it, it will be much better understood. So, when the particles sorry are at rest, suppose the black dark colored particles are my heavier particles and light colored particles are the lighter materials. So, they are in a mixed state. Now, what is happening when you are having a pulsation stroke that they are being lifted up. So, essentially in uh, in terms of chemical engineering literature it is called the fluidization. Fluidization means increase of the void spaces or increase of the bed voices or bed expansion. So, when you are trying to do it the relatively lighter particles will be moving relatively much higher height and then the heavier particles because their mass is more. So, they are they, so the dark colored particles are here and your lighter particles are, are much further uh, they have traveled further than the your heavier particles. So, when during the suction stroke because the mass 
of the of a same size particle the heavier particles will have will be having more mass and they have traveled a lesser distance in the upward direction. So, they will uh, report to the jig aperture a uh, very fast in a faster rate than the or the jig uh, your screen bed uh, faster uh, than the your lighter particles. But what will happen to the fine heavy particles? So, fine heavy particles again the similar mechanism what we have explained I have explained it that what is the dragging material is doing. So, you see here that the coarse light particles when they are getting your uh, uh, say trying to rest on the your top of the heavier particles coarse heavy particles. So, because of their sizes are bigger, so they will have some kind of your void spaces in between the particles and these dark colored heavy light your small heavy particles because of their mass that is your highest uh, your mass they will try to trickle through these spaces and that is called the consolidated trickling in terms of mineral processing uh, literature but I would say this is one kind of diffusion through the pores. Now, let us see that what is written here that is stratification in a bed of particles. So, this process we call it stratification. So, in a bed of particles results from the repeated pulsation of a current of fluid up through the bed. That means, your you are trying to stratify the bed based on their density difference that is rearrangement of the particle mixture having two density classes that I want to rearrange them based on their density difference. So, the heavier particles should uh, uh, be uh, reporting at the at the bottom and the bottom of the bed and the lighter particles should be on top of that. So, this is what is being done by this pulsation stroke because you are trying to expand the bed voiders that is you are giving more void spaces more free path for the particles to reorient themselves based on their own mass. The particles in the bed are expanded so that when pulsation ceases the particles are allowed to consolidate under the influence of gravity this is what is the phenomenon. The expansion and contraction of the bed is repeated because in one cycle this is the complete pulsation and suction we call it one cycle. The one cycle may not be sufficient enough for the particles to reorient themselves based on their mass I would say is based on their mass. So, you have to do it repeatedly for some time so that they are uh, segregated in a form which we wanted to have. So, the expansion and contraction of the bed is repeated in a cyclic operation until the heavy and light particles have stratified according to their specific gravity. But how many cycles we need? Now, the frequency of pulsation usually varies from 50 to 300 cycles per minute. So, it depends on what is the size range you are going to treat and what is the density difference between your wanted that is your heavy and light particles. That means, here you can again apply the uh, your criteria for concentration criteria that is what we discussed at the beginning of the gravity concentration your uh, say lectures. So, this is the idealized jigging particle distribution over time that is in the start they are all there that is at the same height same same position then differential initial acceleration because here one thing is very interesting that the settling velocity we are talking about but the your settling time is so less because you are doing it repeatedly your suppose you are having uh, you 300 cycles per minute that means, the particles may are not given appropriate time to reach their terminal settling velocity. So, 
we are trying to apply here the differences in their accelerating velocity, accelerating settling velocity, not the terminal settling velocity which we had discussed earlier. So, that is why I have written that differential initial acceleration, then this is the hindered setting mode because the particles are crowded, you have got so many particles and this is the consolidation trickling that is what we have already discussed. This is again with that similar type of thing I wanted to show you that how this pulsation and suction strokes look like. So, that is your like is your sinusoidal motion in many times. So, this is the pulse and stroke that is from here you are having this pulse and stroke pulse and stroke and this is the your suction. So, this complete one that is you are lifting because you are you are pressing the fluid now the entire fluid layer they are trying to go up. So, that is the pulsing and or say pulsation and when you are withdrawing it. So, entire fluid will try to go down like this manner. So, that is the suction stroke. So, this is the complete cycle. So, that is from here to here this is the complete cycle. So, how much time it takes to complete this that is called the cycling time. So, where the water velocity will be maximum here actually the water maximum water will be having the maximum velocity at the bed. So, as a particle just starts to move from rest, I am trying to explain you a bit more. The particle velocity is small. So, that is as the particles just starts to move from rest that is what you are trying to lift them. The particle velocity is small and hence the drag force acting on the particle is negligible. Since the drag force increases with particle velocity relative to the fluid, we have already discussed it in the moment of solids uh, uh, say lecture series. That is the initial acceleration of the particles that depends only on the specific gravity of the solid and fluid and is independent of the particle size. The very interesting thing that is how we are trying to minimize the effect of differences between the particle sizes. Because what we are trying to say that as a particle just starts to move from rest, the particle velocity is small and hence the drag force acting on the particle. If the velocity is small, so that means it has not displaced much of the water. So, naturally your drag will be less that is what we are trying to say here. So, the initial acceleration of the particles that is m dv by dt that is your dv by dt. So, that m will depend only on the specific gravity of the solid and fluid because the your drag drag is dependent on how much of surface area of particles you are having in contact with the water. So, here what will happen that your drag is less because particle is not moving much faster. So, it depends on so initial acceleration will be more uh, 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 will be dependent on the your particle density and the fluid density. So, that is based on the uh, it is independent of the particle size. So, once the particles reach an appreciable velocity, the fluid drag force becomes significant. That is initially when the particle tries to move up that initial velocity is less and when the initial velocity is less. So, the fluid drag is less because it is not displacing much of the fluid and when there is no displacement not much displacement of the fluid the relative your shear between the your particle uh, your particle your uh, surface and the fluid layer is less. But and in that case so your movement will depend that is at what rate it will travel that will be more controlled by the density differences than the size. But once the particles reach an appreciable velocity, 
the fluid drag force becomes significant and it opposes the particles further acceleration to the extent that eventually the particle acceleration drops to 0 and a constant terminal velocity is reached which will depend on the particle diameter as well as density. This is the concept of terminal setting velocity. So, during the accelerating motion initial stages particle size does not have much role particle density has got the major role to play, but after some time when it starts accelerating further. So, the drag force will come into picture and you start having the effect of both size and density. So, that is why that is the basis that is if I know how to control the pulsation and suction strokes frequency and their amplitude. So, if we know that how to uh, exploit this that is your only the initial accelerating velocity term that is your that is time how much it requires that is before it reaches the terminal setting velocity condition. So, if I try to do the separation within that time period in between the terminal setting velocity and the accelerator that is when it is at rest and before reaching the terminal setting velocity condition. What we have shown in that your uh, initial uh, gravity concentration lecture with two plots that even for a coarser particles this difference is around a fraction of a second 0.4 or 0.5 of a second. So, when I have a 300 cycles per minute. So, that means every second we have got 5 cycles. So, one cycle is taking 0.2 of a second and so 0.2 of a second and then your half of that is suction and half of that is pulsation. So, when the particle is having your uh, say upward velocity accelerating velocity that is in the half of that. So, we are giving around 0.1 second time. So, that is uh, uh, much closer to my initial accelerating velocity. So, we are not giving the particles to uh, reach the terminal setting velocity condition. So, in that case you are trying to minimize the effect of particle sizes, you are trying to promote the separation between the density, but when you are having a reduced cycle probably you are reaching to that zone. So, where you will have 50 cycles per minute, where we will have 300 cycles per minute that depends on what are the particle sizes and what are the particle density ranges you are trying to treat and uh, then uh, other 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 features also are very important that I will discuss with some kind of your equations. At a high cycle frequency that is therefore, the total distance travelled by the particles will be governed more by the difference in the initial acceleration between particles due to their density difference that is what I have uh, already explained you that is at a high cycle frequency that is when you are at 300 cycles per minute this is basically you are trying to uh, promote the initial acceleration based mostly on the density difference rather than by their terminal velocities which is also influenced by the particle size. That means, you want to minimize the effect of the particle size differences. That is for particles with a similar terminal velocity such as would be experienced by small heavy particles and large light minerals a short jigging cycle would be necessary for separation. So, that means what it is telling that if I have your particles of equal terminal setting velocity because of the uh, say suppose I have got light particle, but they are much larger and you have got a heavy particle, but they are relative finer. So, they can be both your equal setting velocity. Now, if I am not controlling this what will happen that equal setting velocity particle will travel together and will report in the same stream. So, I am not able to separate these two particles based on their density, but if I have a short jigging cycle that means 
if I give if I am operating within that your up to 0.4 second that is if we are much closer to your 0 to your 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 seconds your if you remember that curve then we are trying to promote the separation mostly based on the density. So, that is the requirement that you need a short jigging cycle for separation. This is very very important to understand based on my setting velocity your concept. However, for coarser particles longer strokes that is your what should be the stroke that is if you remember that your that cycle. So, one is frequency another one is the stroke. So, longer strokes with decreased speed is found to give better stratification hence and hence it may be preferable to split the feed into closely sized fractions and have a jig optimized for each size fraction. That is now if I ask you to process from 100 millimeter to 0.5 millimeter sizes of material say suppose it is coal should I feed it into one jig or should I have a discrete sizes in between and then we try to separate them into a different chamber different jigging chambers. So, that is what is being told that it is better that we have a discrete particle size ranges and then we can select the separate jigs and try to try to separate the try to clean the coal in different compartments. The frequency of the jig cycle and the control of events within each cycle is critical. What are those events? That is jig cycle control of events means is the pulsation and the suction stroke how they should be designed and what is that your stroke length is critical in determining the behavior of particles within the jig bed. A minimum cycle time is required to allow each phase of the cycle to be optimum for a given feed. So, if you are not allowing that time the particle will not have time to reorient themselves based on their own density then what will happen then your entire effort is going into vain because they are not yet uh, say uh, say get stratified based on their densities. Any further increase in cycle time would not be optimum or the bed would be in compacted state and no further separation would occur during this interval hence affecting the capacity. Because too much of compaction if the bed is already compacted if the bed is already filled that you have already got the stratification done then if you still continue that that is it is just the wastage of your energy and you will you are basically increasing the residence time which is not required. So, your capacity will be reduced. Cycle speed adjustment is therefore, the most important operating variable and I will try to show you that how they are related in the next lecture. Till then thank you very much.